Hi everyone and welcome to this lesson looking at calculations from balanced equations with gases. This is the second lesson on this learning outcome where we're considering molar volumes and volumes for gases. So last week we looked at how to calculate molar volume and to carry out calculations uh, either to find out molar volume or to use molar volume to find out volume. And today we're going to look at volumes for gases. So the notes that I'd like to take are just a few slides that have this uh, pale blue, blue background. If you need to pause at any time for more time, then please do that. Firstly, we're going to consider this reaction between carbon monoxide and oxygen that produces carbon dioxide. So we've got a molar ratio from the balanced equation, which is that two moles of carbon monoxide react with one mole of oxygen to produce two moles of carbon dioxide. Because all of the chemicals in this reaction are gases, then we can actually have what's called a volume ratio. So that means that two moles, if two moles of carbon monoxide react with one mole of oxygen to produce uh, two moles of carbon dioxide, then we could also say that two litres of ox uh, carbon dioxide reacts with one litre of oxygen to produce two litres of carbon dioxide gas and so on. And that would be for any ratio of gases, okay? So, provided volumes are measured at the same temperature and pressure, any volume of carbon monoxide will produce the same volume of carbon dioxide by reacting with half that volume of oxygen. So, because the ratio is two moles to one mole, producing two moles, then that would mean it was two litres to one litre to two litres, or 50 centimetres cubed would react with 25 centimetres cubed to produce 50 centimetres cubed, etc. In a chemical reaction involving gases, other reactants or products may be liquids or solids. The volumes of these are negligible. Remember that word negligible just means that so small that it and we're not going to count it towards the total, compared to gases when considering the overall volume of reactants and products. So here's an example for the combustion of propane. The balanced equation gives us the mole ratio that one mole of carbon, uh, sorry, of propane reacts with five moles of oxygen to give three moles of carbon dioxide and four moles of water. When we want to look at the volume ratio, then we need to discount anything that is not a gas. So in this case, it is the water because at 20 degrees, water is a liquid. So that means that we would have one mole of um, propane reacting with five moles of oxygen to produce three moles of carbon dioxide. So again, we could substitute that one litre would react with five litres to give three litres. Or we could say um, 200 centimetres cubed would react with a thousand centimetres cubed or one litre um, to produce 600 centimetres cubed and so on. So we're just using the mole ratio, but because we've got gases, we can just substitute volumes in. Okay, so here's an example of a question involving this. So 20 centimetres cubed of propane was burned. So if I was to put in the mole ratio 1, 5 and 3, and then ignore this because we're going to just deal with volumes. If 20 centimetres cubed of propane was burned, what volume of oxygen would be required for that? So the ratio here is 1 to 5, so therefore it would be 20 to 100. So that's going to be 100 centimetres cubed. And then the second part is what volume of carbon dioxide would be produced in the reaction. So that would be the, th the ratio 1 to 3 if we're going from here to here. So 1 to 3 would be like 20 to 60 centimetres cubed. So we would get 60 centimetres cubed of carbon dioxide. If we did the same reaction but at 150 centimetres cubed, now the water is going to be a gas, okay? Instead of asking uh, the same question but just looking at gases, I've got a different question here which is actually uh, involving an excess of one of the gases and normally all reactions will have at least one reactant in excess. It's very unusual to carry a reaction uh, where there's 
exactly the quantities of reactant that we need. So we need to find out in this equation, in this question, sorry, the volume and composition of the resultant gas mixture. What that means is we need to give a total volume of gas that we will have at the end, which will include the gases in the products and any leftover gases from the reactant that was in excess. Okay, so 40 centimetre cubed of propane. So let's put our mole ratio 1, 5, 3 and 4. They're all gases, so they'll all be part of the volume ratio as well. 40 centimetres cubed of propane would react with 4 times 5, sorry, 40 times 5 centimetres cubed, which is 200 centimetres cubed of oxygen. Okay, so the first thing we can say is that we would have some oxygen left over and we're going to actually have 250 minus 200 because remember we had 250 at the start and we used up 200. So we're actually going to have, oh, excuse me, 50 centimetres cubed of oxygen left at the end. Then we'll look up at how much carbon dioxide. So it's a 1 to 3 ratio here. So that would be 40 to 120 centimetres cubed. That's how much carbon dioxide. And then to find out how much water, that's a 1 to 4 ratio. So 40 to 160 centimetres cubed. So at the end, we'll have 120 of carbon dioxide and 160 of water. So let's put those in as well. So the CO2 we would have is 120 and the water is 160 centimeter cubed. So that is the composition, the total, those numbers together is 330 centimeters cubed. So at the end of this reaction, we would have 330 centimeter cubed of gases made up of 50 oxygen left over from the start and our product 120 carbon dioxide and 160 water vapor. The notes are now finished for this, so it's not necessary for you to take down any uh, more of the um, examples. However, um, please pay attention as I go over six different types of question you could be asked on this topic, okay? So in each question, we'll look at what information we're given and what we need to do to work out the answer. Okay, so this equation describes the Haber process for manufacturing ammonia. Calculate the volume of hydrogen gas required to exactly react with 25 centimetre cubed nitrogen gas. So we've got our, for question A, the reaction between nitrogen and hydrogen to give ammonia. They're all gases, so the ratio will be 1 to 3 giving 2. I'm sorry, I tried to draw a wee reversible arrow here. There we are. Um, so if we start off with 25 centimetre cubed of nitrogen, we would need three times that of hydrogen. So that would be 75 centimetre cubed. So that's going to be our answer for the first part. It's just three times 25. According to the mole ratio, that would be the volume we need. Part B, assuming excess hydrogen gas is present, what volume of nitrogen gas is required to produce 150 centimetre cubed of ammonia? So this time we're only looking at the nitrogen and the ammonia that exist in a 1 to 2 ratio. So 1 to 2. And if we want to produce 150 centimetre cubed of the ammonia, we would need to have half as much of that. So that's 2 down to 1 of the nitrogen gas. So that would be 75 centimetre cubed. In this question, it's also about... Um, working out which one is in excess, okay? So nitrogen dioxide can be produced by sparking a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen. So we've got our balanced equation up here where we've got one mole of nitrogen react with two moles of oxygen to produce two moles of nitrogen dioxide. In an experiment, a mixture of 80 litres of nitrogen and 20 litres of oxygen is sparked in an apparatus that allows the pressure to remain constant. Part A, calculate which reactant is in excess and by how much. So the ratio of the gases that are reacting the nitrogen and the oxygen is one to two. So if we started with 80 litres of nitrogen, we would need 160 litres of oxygen. We actually only have 20 litres of oxygen, so that can't be the reaction that happens. So if all 20 litres of oxygen react, that would need 10 litres of nitrogen. Do we have enough? Yeah, we've got 80. So the nitrogen is in excess um, and then to find out by how much, we would just do 80 minus the 10 that we use 
so by 70 litres. Part B, assuming complete conversion of, of available reactants, calculate the total volume of the gas at the end of the reaction once the temperature is returned to normal. So what is going to happen then is we're going to use the 20 litres because that's an our limiting reactant, the oxygen is limiting, and the ratio of the oxygen, so two oxygens should give two nitrogen dioxides. So that means 20 litres should give 20 litres, okay? And it says calculate the total volume of gas at the end of the reaction. So the total would be this 70 litres of nitrogen and the 20 litres of nitrogen dioxide. So the total would be 90 litres of gas. This next question is an example of uh, how reacting gas volumes would appear in multiple choice. It says, which volume of oxygen in litres would be required for the complete combustion of a gaseous mixture containing a litre of carbon monoxide and three litres of hydrogen? We first need to write balanced equations for these steps. So firstly, we've got carbon monoxide reacting with oxygen, and then we've got hydrogen reacting with oxygen. Now, carbon monoxide reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide, and hydrogen react with oxygen to produce water. And then we just need to balance these equations. So we need to have two and two here and two and two here. And that gives us the right number of each type of atom in each equation. So that gives us our mole ratio. One, one, um, excuse me. Two, one, two, and then two, one, two. We're actually just looking at the reactants for this question okay so the question says what if we start off with one liter of carbon monoxide so one liter if it's a two to one ratio would require half a liter of oxygen and then if we started with three liters of hydrogen then we would need half of that of oxygen here so that'd be one and a half liters okay so then what we need to do is we need to total up these one and a half plus a half which is two. So that is our answer for this question. Two litres of oxygen will be needed in total. Next we've got a reaction which doesn't have any state symbols but we're given enough information to work out the state of matter of each uh, substance. So 20 centimetre cubed of ammonia gas, so that's, this is a gas here, was reacted with an excess of heated copper dioxide. Now copper oxide is ionic so it's going to be a solid for sure. Assuming all measurements were made at 200 degrees, what would the volume of gaseous products be? So at 200 degrees, copper is still going to be a solid. The water is going to be in vapour form and the nitrogen will also be a gas. So what we've got, if we're just talking about the gases then, we've got two moles of ammonia giving three moles of water and one mole of nitrogen. So the gas ratio is two to three to one. If we started with 20 centimetre cubed of ammonia, we should get 30 centimetre cubed of water and 10 centimetre cubed of nitrogen. Those totaled together would be 40 centimetres cubed and that is answer A. Our next question here involves excesses again. So we need to um, look at our mole ratio of this uh, reaction. So how many litres of nitrogen dioxide gas would be produced in a reaction starting with a mixture of five litres of nitrogen monoxide gas and two litres of oxygen gas? So in this equation, one mole, it's actually uh, an equation that we've already dealt with today, I think. So two moles of nitrogen monoxide gas react with um, one mole of oxygen gas to produce two moles of nitrogen dioxide gas. If we started with five litres of nitrogen monoxide, we would need two and a half litres of oxygen. We only have two litres, so that can't be what happens. Instead, what must happen is that we have two litres of oxygen all reacting, and that would need twice that, so that would need four litres of nitrogen monoxide gas, and would give four litres of nitrogen dioxide gas. So four litres is what we would get produced, and that corresponds to answer C. The final question here is an example of a reacting gas volumes question accompanied by a molar volume question. So the first part of this is we've got a balanced equation for the combustion of diphosphine. What volume of oxygen would be required for the complete combustion of 10 centimetre cubed of diphosphine? 
So the mole ratio is 2 to 7. So if we started with 10 centimetre cubed, we would need 35 centimetre cubed. That's the answer for the first one. We've just used the mole ratio and because they're both gases, then we can convert that to a volume ratio. Second step, calculate the volume occupied by 0.33 grams of diphosphine. Take the molar volume to be 24 litres per mole. So we need to use our relationships here. Number of moles is the mass divided by the gram formula mass and number of moles is the volume divided by the molar volume, okay? Now, we are asked to find the volume. So volume is what our unknown is in this question here. And the first thing we're going to need to do is work out number of moles. And we'll do that using mass divided by gram formula mass. Now, the gram formula mass of diphosphine, p 2 h Four is 66. So then we're going to do 0 0.33 divided by 66. Which is 0 0.005 moles. Then we've worked out now the number of moles. So we had the mass, the gram formula mass. We worked out the number of moles. And now we can use the molar volume so we multiply to work out the volume we can do number of moles multiplied by the molar volume which is point as what do we just work out point zero zero five times 24 that we get from here and that comes out as zero point one two liters or 120 centimeters cubed. And that is our final answer for this question. Okay, hope those examples um, were okay for you to understand. If not, please make sure you ask um, on Teams or on Show My Homework or by email and we'll be happy to help you. Thanks, bye.